Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, and today I'm with attorney Rachel Alters. And Rachel, a lot of people who I come across, business professionals, employees, all different types of occupations, they always ask me, what is disability insurance? A, a lot of people just don't know what it is. They don't realize that it's a, you know, that it's a benefit out there that you can buy or that you can get as an employee benefit, just like health insurance. So let's break it down in this video and kind of do like a disability insurance 101, maybe give a few tips as to if you were going to buy your own policy or you're an employee considering um, volunteering or signing up because a lot of employers make you do that, what you should look for and what you should know. So right off the bat, so what is disability insurance? Okay, Greg, disability insurance is, it's a, you know, an insurance policy that is supposed to protect you should you get sick um, or get hurt and not be able to go to work and, and perform your job and earn money for your family. So what it is, is it's a, it's a policy that you can buy on your own, which you can get through an insurance broker, or sometimes your employer offers them either it's for free or you can pay partial, you know, into the partial premiums of the, the disability policy and um, you can get a policy that protects you. You know, hope, everyone hopes they don't need such a policy, but should you get sick or get injured, you want to be protected. You want your income to be protected so that you you're, can pay your mortgage, you can put food on the table. So it's a very good thing for everyone to have. So it's it's also known as disability income. We we disability income protection, disability income insurance. We call it lots of different names. Whether it's group disability coverage, private disability insurance coverage, but you know it's it's undoubted that it's a great benefit for people to have. Unfortunately, it's overlooked. And according to recent statistics, they say only a third of the entire U.S. workforce has this coverage as a group benefit and maybe only as low as 15 percent have their own individual coverage. So, you know, a third in some cases would be a good number. But when you compare that to health insurance, whereas greater than 50 to 60 percent of people working have health insurance, a lot of people are ignoring the disability insurance. And when you think about it, fortunately, in the advances of medicine now, a lot of people buy life insurance, but you're more likely to survive a significant medical condition now um, and live past your working age, which used to be 65 and many people work well into their 70s now. And it really gets important to have coverage that can replace your income. Right. So, you, you know, Rachel, usually people can insure themselves up to 60 or 66 percent of their income, um, which means that if you're making one hundred thousand dollars a year, you can get sixty thousand dollars or sixty six thousand dollars worth of coverage and it's paid on a monthly basis. Right. So if you're someone who has $60,000 worth of coverage, you could be qualified for $5,000 a month of disability income. Now, Rach, when someone gets this type of coverage, how do they just get approved like Social Security and it's gonna continue for years? Or is it a month to month eligibility in terms of getting paid your disability income? Well, when, when you apply for the benefits, um, it is, it's not, you know, automatic once you get approved, you're on claim till age 65. So what happens is when you apply for the benefits, the insurance carrier require that you fill out forms. They want your doctors to fill out forms. They want to see your medical records. And if you do get on claim, which hopefully you will, um, every so often, sometimes it's every three months, sometimes it's every six months after you're on claim for a while, it could be once a year, but you're always going to be reviewed, um, to see if your, your disability, whether it's an injury or your illness has improved to the point where you can go back to work. So it's a constant review and, and you have to stay on top of the doctors and the medical records and the forms, um, pretty much all the time. Okay. So. I always tell people about disability insurance, I say it's like buying a car. Because when you go to get a car, they can say, you know, do you want the V6, the V8, do you want leather, do you want a sunroof, do you want power windows, do you want emergency alert? Same thing with a disability insurance policy if you're buying it on your own. When you get it from your employer, usually they don't have many options because they get a group plan that covers whether it's 50 people or thousands of people. And sometimes as a group, the only thing you can choose is do you want to buy up, which means you can get a little bit higher percentage of coverage in the event that you have an injury but, or a sickness, but you can't choose the terms. But when you're in the private world and you're buying your own, the definition of disability, 
lifetime benefits, um, all different kinds of things come into play. But one of the most important things is the definition of disability. And Rachel, what is the definition of disability usually in a disability policy, whether it's individual or group? Um, usually a disability policy has a standard definition of disability, which is if you are unable to perform the material substantial duties of your occupation and you're unable to earn 80% of your pre-disability income, then you can be considered disabled. Um, that's standard. However, in individual policies, sometimes there are, there are better definitions of disability where if you're just not able to do your own occupation, the material substantial duties or the important duties of your own occupation, and you can be working in another occupation um, and still earning the same income, you can also qualify as disabled under the policy. So that's mainly for policies that you buy on your own. When, it, when it's a group policy, it's a little bit more complicated, um, but you you are you are disabled if you can't do the material substantial duties of your occupation. That is the standard definition. So uh, I, I guess we should use an example. Um, and if if you take someone like a doctor, for example, who might be a surgeon, like an orthopedic surgeon, right. and if the orthopedic surgeon says, you know, hey, Rachel, I can't do surgery, and eighty percent plus of what I did was surgeries. That's how I made my living. But and I have this disability policy. But I'm th I always wanted to teach, and I think I can do that. I just can't operate. Would that person be able to teach, earn whatever they would make as a teacher, and, and collect their full benefits under their policy? If they have a policy that's a true ONOC definition, yes, absolutely they can. Um, a physician who was mainly a surgeon, like you said, doing 80% of surgeries pre-disability, um, who still wants to work, whether it's manage the office or just see patients and not work in the OR any longer um, or teach as a professor at a university, yes, absolutely. If they're disabled and can't perform surgeries, they still can continue working, earning an income, and they also can qualify for the, benef the full benefit under the disability policy for a true ONOC definition. So that is something that, that a lot of my clients do. Um, take advantage of. I, ha I represent a lot of physicians who can't operate anymore due to whether it's an arm injury, a back injury, um, MS, Parkinson's, there's a lot of different things that prevent surgeons from operating, but they still want to work. Um, I have a, a doctor I represent who now manages the, a hospital and he no longer does surgeries, but yet he's collecting his full disability benefits under his policies. So it's important for people to understand that the definition of disability, that each company can offer three or four different, five different versions of a definition of disability, and they're not all the same. Right. And more often than not, Rach, let's shift over to the group side, the employer-provided policies. What usually happens, you start out with an own occupation definition of disability, and it changes at a, a certain period of time. Can you explain what that process is like? Sure. Um, in the group policies, unfortunately, most of them, unless you have a very good employer who spends a lot of money on the policy, most of them are only own occupation for the first 24 months. So for 24 months, the definition of disability is whether you could do the material substantial duties of your own occupation as it's defined in the national economy. Um, and after 24 months, the definition changes to whether you could do any gainful occupation that you are qualified to do by education, training, and experience. So after 24 months, you know, if you were, let's say, a surgeon and you were operating and you're on your feet all day and you're, you know, doing 90% of your, your um, job duties are for surg or surgical, after 24 months, the insurance carrier is no longer caring about that. They're looking at whether you could do a sedentary position, sitting at a desk reviewing medical records, or see patients in the office um, on a regular basis. So unfortunately, that's a much more stringent definition, and it's harder to get approved under the any gainful occupation definition, but it's definitely possible. Um, what we do is we work with the doctors to make sure that the notes support the fact that you no longer could do sedentary work as well. So it's very important to make sure that that's all going, you know, at the same time, once you're under the ONOC definition, you also want to be preparing for that any gainful occupation definition as well. And then also in that any gainful occupation, you have a lot of policies that define gainful occupation as an occupation that would pay at least 60% of what you used to earn. Right.
So if you were making $100,000, they would say, well, if you could do a job that would pay $60,000, then we'll find that you're not disabled. But if you can't do a job, and even if they find a job that pays $50,000, they'd still have to find that you're disabled because if the definition of gainful occupation is one that pays 60% or more of what you used to make, and that 60% number is 60,000, then you're still disabled. So that's a little bit better definition when it defines at least a income component for gainful occupation. But again, not every policy does that, which you know, is something that you should be aware of when you're looking into this group coverage. I mean, Rach, there's no doubt individual policies are significantly better than an employer-provided group policy. And there's this body of law called ERISA, which is the Employee Retirement Income Security Act, which governs all of the employer-provided policies, but not the private disability policies. Why is it a huge advantage for someone to have a private disability income policy instead of an employer-provided policy? Well, Greg, I could go on and on probably for a half an hour about that, but for the, the main issues are when your group disability policy is governed by ERISA, it's extremely limited for so many reasons. Um, one of them is that you are limited to a judge um, reviewing your claim in federal court, you don't get a jury trial. Um, a judge reviews your medical records, only what's in your claim file, and determines whether the insurance carrier was arbitrary and capricious in the denial of your claim. Now this you know, doesn't sound like it's unfair, but it's a very unfair process. So the, the claimant has to show that the insurance carrier didn't even have one reasonable basis to deny the claim. And if they did have one reasonable basis, which could be that they just had a doctor review the medical records and said that they feel that it's their opinion that you could go back to work, the claimant loses in trial. Um, it's extremely unfair. Unfortunately, it's the way it goes. With a private policy, if you buy it on your own, you have the right to a jury trial of your peers, which is an incredible advantage to a claimant. When you have a jury trial, you could, you could present evidence. The record is enclosed once the claim is denied. You can take depositions, discovery. You could, you, know, you could add additional information up until the date you go to trial. There's so many, so many advantages. Plus, in some states, you could actually go after the insurance carrier for bad faith for denying the claim. That doesn't exist with under ERISA. All you can go after are basically your past benefits that they owe you. And maybe if you win, the judge has discretion to give attorney's fees and costs. So basically, all the carrier has to pay you under ERISA is what they've already owed you. There's no punishment for them doing the wrong thing. If you have your own policy, they can actually be punished severely for doing the wrong thing if a court founds, if a judge or a, tr a jury finds that they were in bad faith. So Rachel, we went through all of the basics of what disability insurance is, and I forgot to mention there's short-term disability, which covers people usually from anywhere from within seven days to a year. And then of course there's long-term disability insurance, which usually kicks in from either 90 days to 180 days. But there's so many different aspects with these disability policies, and we covered the differences between a private policy and a group policy, as well as how important the definition of disability is. So for anyone out there, whether you know, you're looking to buy a policy and you have specific questions, we're happy to review those policies and give you our opinion as to what's good or what we don't think is good. And obviously if you have a claim, we assist people filing for disability, whether they're just applying or they're on claim and they're having issues. Obviously if their claim has been denied, we handle appeals and lawsuits. Our clients are located all over the country. And one of the great things for you to do to really learn about disability insurance is to go ahead and look at our website and look up the specific companies that you're considering to buy a policy for because we have lots of information. We have reviews about these policies, questions and answers specific to these particular disability companies, as well as articles that we've written about lawsuits that have gone on with these disability companies. So it gives you a good flavor for what's out there because we see it on the other side. We don't sell the disability coverage, but we see a big chunk of the claims and we've handled thousands of these claims. So we like to think that we have a great understanding of what's going on and that we could help you in any way with your long-term disability claim should the need arrive. arrive. Thank you so much for considering our law firm and we we would appreciate if you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can continue to get helpful videos like this that may benefit you in the future should you ever need to have a long-term disability claim. Thank you.